Varsity Claw, welcome back to another classic. It's finally happened. We have a recruit sign. Look, I get it. It is taking a really long time this season to actually get ourselves a recruit, but we got one. Let's meet him. So Derek Simpson, as you might recall, was one of the guys we brought in for a recent recruiting visit, and he loved it. We got 1,050 points from that. And if you look at what this dude ultimately had, it was basically us and nobody else. I mean, Kentucky and Pitt offered him a scholarship, but they weren't really that close. I mean, check his ratings. He's a pretty solid player. We looked at him previously, but 71 speed, 78 acceleration, pursuits of 75, play wrecks in 83, man and zone coverage are pretty solid. I feel like this dude is a linebacker, maybe a defensive end, but he's got pretty good tackle rating, so probably sit it's the first year and then after that maybe he plays but the way our linebackers are who knows he might end up starting now because it's been a little bit of a weird year john mcconnell not still a heisman candidate but you know what i've moved past that right now if he's a heisman candidate great if he wins it great but if he doesn't we're still out here trying to win a natty that's all that matters and now from a ranking standpoint we're not one we're not two we're not three we are number four in the nation let's go cascade valley is the number four team in the nation we got even one first place vote which is a giant w in my book we beat what is now number 16 ohio state and we are looking really good we're ahead of penn state cincinnati and michigan this week though we have a very very tough iowa team which is on the cusp of being ranked they're five and one they could be in the top 25 especially if they beat us now despite having a better overall team we have a better coach team because you can see that while we're pretty much losing across the board we have got every single statistical category dominated now if you look at their schedule they've beat north texas they lost to iowa state uh they ended up beating rutgers terps michigan state and illinois They've had not that difficult of a schedule. I mean, no team has really had a winning record except for Iowa State, so I kind of like our chances still. Now, this is a massive game for a lot of reasons. Again, we're in the top five. This is right where we wanted to be and see what we can ultimately do, but Iowa's also a team that's, again, playing really good defense. Well, the big thing for this matchup is that we're in the same side of our conference, so if we happen to win this game, that's great, but if we lose, then, well, they have a stake in the claim for the conference title. So our goal is simple. Absolutely destroy Iowa. Let the conference title know that it's ours. Simple. Jason Barr up the middle. Lots of room. Good broken ankle. Jason Barr's out here with a heck of a game to start. 17 yards in that rush. Now, we have a really good run game, but also so does Iowa. They have, like, one of the best running backs in the nation who we have to be very mindful of today. With a little curl route. RJ Riley runs him over. RJ Riley saying put his name in the record books because that man just ran into it over and got in the end zone. I see you, young fella. Things got pretty spicy there. Uh, RJ Riley absolutely destroyed that corner and went all the way to the house after that. I love what I'm seeing from this dude right now. I told you guys he was going to be one of the best young players to come into this team, and he shows it. But look at this quarterback. We got to hope Cole can get to him. Josh Cole doesn't bring him down, but I thought we had him in the backfield, but we chose the wrong guy. The rushing attack from Iowa is our biggest threat right now. I don't really know if their quarterback's going to have what it takes to get it done, but their running back, if he didn't trip over and his own feet, is gone. Here we go again. Second down, six yards to go. We haven't really done anything to stop the run game, and it barely happens there as we drop him for one. Big play coming up. We're going to play the pass pretty much the entire way here, watching the running back out of the backfield. They go right across the middle where the gap ultimately was, and they pick up the first down. We just got to stop them some way. I think if we can get a turnover from Iowa, especially early on in the game, they're going to be absolutely in shambles. And we need more speed in linebacker, though. As Cole, as good as he is, he's just not fast. And we've honestly had, like, an embarrassment of riches in linebacker, right? We've had Nesbitt. We have Eikenberg. We had so many guys that have dominated there. Even our mid-tier guys have been amazing. So now when we're sort of not in a renaissance period of linebackers, it's tough. I'm trying to find something to go with the run again. Up the middle. I mean, lanes for days right now. We definitely had sort of a, a quick and dirty drive where their drive has been super long and it's been killing us so far with second play we dropping for a loss but they still are here in third and five we're gonna switch our coverage up playing for the pass they actually go for the run we got a couple of guys there we get absolutely destroyed we're trying to stop gavin williams but he's going to run everybody over including ray walton at the end and iowa scores and evens it up less than ideal was what i'd say the defense sort of played there wasn't anything really positive to take from that iowa basically ran a jv football offense where they just passed it non-stop and we could do literally nothing about it. So here we are, sad. This time, similar route what we ran earlier this time. Robert Walt is going to exploit the coverage on the edge. A little heavier formation. We got McFadden in the backfield as well as Barr. McFadden trying to get to the edge, runs into his own guy, and then gets literally destroyed. That linebacker came off the edge like Dwayne The Rock Johnson when he bounces all the ropes and hits somebody with a shoulder. That was just painful. Barr, though, trying to find some room up the middle. He does make it 35, which should be possibly able to be getting. Got it. 
words are hard. Time play, 35. Feeling the blitz. We're floating one, and it's Baker who's going to be a yard shy. I think we got to go for it here. A situation like this where we're just half of a yard shy, I trust our offensive line to get the job done. See how much we should trust him here. Look at Barr finding that gap. Gets the first down, and we're still alive. First down again, McConnell. Hits him with the play action. They bit it pretty hard because they nearly almost killed that man, and then we should have just ran it because we got McConnell to drop it after he threw it a run. I mean, that's a heck of a throw, in my opinion. I love what I was seeing, but it just ended up being dropped. Back here to Barr. He's finding his way through again. The dude is going between the tackles for big gains all day. McFadden comes in to give Barr a little bit of a breather. He's been super effective this season as well. Uh, I don't know about that one. They stop him easily. Going for it twice on fourth down in a game is tough and converting it. Doing it twice in one drive feels impossible, but we do a lot of things that are impossible. Okay, I see why it's impossible. The hard part about a screenplay is ultimately if it doesn't work or if it's covered, that's really the only <laughs> option that you have. And we found that out very quickly. And they throw one here. John Hole! We have a John Hole getting a pick alert. This happens once every decade. John Hole's back. John Hall has been such a good player this season. The only really gripe we've had with him is that he just hasn't picked the ball off. He's focused more on, oh my God, John McConnell? Put some respect in that man's name. Now, again, the one gripe on Hall has been that he hasn't picked the ball off, but he's done really better since then. But we have a big problem. John McConnell's out. Riley's in the game. Riley's going to get destroyed immediately in the backfield because no one blocked at all. Riley nearly got past that defender, but at the end of the day, they clipped him enough to make sure that he couldn't get in the end zone. Now we hand it off to Barr. Barr, who's obviously frustrated because he wasn't given the ball to go into the end zone just from being gassed previously. He gets a touchdown today, and hopefully we see a multi-touchdown day from him because we're going to need it if McConnell's out. All right, let's see what we can do here. Obviously, a passing down. No one in the backfield other than the quarterback. We got some pressure. No, we clicked over to the wrong person. The big tight end is going down the field. No one gets him, and this man goes for 47 on us. If we had gotten a hold of the guy we wanted to, that's a sack. It's just, and unfortunately, was not the case. And they go up the middle again, and this powerful running attack shows no signs of slowing down. We're trying our best to apply a little bit of pressure here to Iowa. Oh, they're in a wildcat. We're watching the run on the edge, and dear God. Oh, my God. Ray Bolton tripped him up enough. At some point, we got to see what this QB is made of. I mean, he threw a really good pass in the pocket a little bit ago. What does he have here? Big presser, and he was going to break that tackle from Hemphill, but Josh Cole said not today. This is sort of the unfortunate part that we have to do. We have to have a little bit more, go, I guess, go, go. guys in the box right now to see what we can ultimately do against them. And, well, I guess when we do that, they just hit our guys with slant routes. The good sign here is that, I guess, kind of sort of we've got third and inches with an opportunity to stop their running back. But look at that man cut on the dime. This is why you're seeing us have our guys <laughs> just panic a little bit. What a hit on Steven Lowe way to get in the backfield. We definitely guessed in that play, assuming they would hand it off to the running back. But if it goes to the QB, the man is still running. We stop him, but they're going to have third and short now to get into the end zone. This is going to be tough. They go to the edge. We got multiple guys there. We get a big stop. This is going to force them to have a lemon booty moment. Do you kick it or do you go for it? Now they're going to have to go ahead and kick it. And honestly, I probably would do the same thing. You're a little bit too deep to go for it. I feel like you can actually confidently get in there. So... See what our guys can ultimately do. Five minutes left here in the first half. They kick the field goal. That one is up. That is good. And they cut the lead to four. Little four-point game here. McConnell is back in the game. And honestly, that's something that every Cascade Valley Coyote fan wants to see. Well, maybe not every Coyote fan because there's like a weirdo that keeps saying McConnell's overrated. I think you're wrong. But it's either here nor there. Second and eight. Floating that one across the middle. Look at Riley get lifted. But he's okay and got the first. RJ Riley's already had a pretty good game today. Again, we wish we had a little bit more going in the passing game. But... It's neither here nor there. Now a dime to Robert Roth goes past the covers for 25. Jason Barr out of the game for a play. Bring McFadden in to help out a little bit. A lot of times when we have McFadden in, teams just sort of assume that he's going to go ahead and go for a screen or something, but the man fumbled on that play. I think he was down, though. We're not currently really in a situation to waste timeouts, potentially, or get screwed over by the ref, so we have to let him go ahead and rock with it and just say it was a fumble, even though, again, I disagree highly that it was. Baker turns to the field, picks up five, and we got third and short. McConnell super efficient today, 6 for 9, over 100 yards with that touchdown, obviously, as well, but we need more. Third and short, going to Barr. Barr is going to be at 4th and 1. A field goal makes it 7, but I feel like Iowa's offense is too good. We got to go for it again. The last time we trusted our offense to get it done, it worked out. Even though we didn't get it, the defense stepped up, so let's see what we can do. They got an extra guy in the box. They go with the blitz. Barr finds the seam, and again, it's enough. First down again. Like what we have out of here in shotgun. 
Connor sets his feet. Who else but Robert Roth gets your investment up in that portfolio because he's in after a 25 yard touchdown. Great poise. Way to get out from the pressure and throw a strike. We ultimately took a gamble and it paid off. Is it risky? Yes. But if you want to be a top five team and stay a top five team, sometimes you got to make a couple of risks and see how they pan out. And what a big hit. Multiple guys get involved and we get a sack for a loss of four. Things getting a little spicy here. They're in a wildcat. Feels like the run's going to the edge. We got a guy right on him and we get a big hit by Ray Walton. Third and long. I like our chances here. Oklahoma. See what guys can do. We're back a little bit in coverage. Their quarterback's probably going to waste a little bit of time here, but that's fine. I want to keep all of our timeouts because if we're going to score again, especially if they punt it, we're going to need all of those here. Play clock under 10. I would likely take it under five. Augustine, a shotgun. He's got Williams in the back with him as well, but we're ready. We're watching for the deep stuff here. They go with the screen, and we've got guys all over that side of the field. No shot. We call a timeout, and with a minute and eight seconds left, we're getting the ball back. Barr doesn't get enough of an opportunity, I think, to return it, but there's been a lot of talk about Mike Hemphill possibly coming in and being a return man. After that crazy return he had from that pick, Hemphill could be the guy that maybe replaces Barr because we want to keep Barr, obviously, as healthy as humanly possible. Now, Barr goes a couple of yards here, gets in midfield, and for the nine-yard return, we're in almost scoring territory. I was scrambling a little bit to get their guys to the line. We're scrambling to get our quarterback safe here. McConnell throws one, and it's off the back of the helmet of Barr. I feel for McConnell because he immediately has somebody in there. The offensive line just completely blew the assignment, and a man was running for his life yet again. Speaking of running for his life, he's got a guy who's going to throw in deep. He's got him. Gold is going to hold that one in for a big game. Gold has had massive moments in this team already. He still is a young player. He doesn't get the volume that you might quite think he should deserve, but when that dude gets a hold of the ball, it's a W. And McFadden just can't get any blocking for him, and it's a loss of six. Second and 16, under 30 seconds left. Got the big fella across the middle, and no one can guard Jeremy Willis. His route running is so high. This dude finds himself open time and time again, especially in the red zone. Last play here for Iowa in the first half. Five seconds left. Obviously, they're in Chucky mode. We're getting some pressure, though. We get a hit on the QB as he throws in. They're going to have one second left. Okay, so this is really the last play for Iowa. After that, little batted ball by Josh Cole. They're trying their best to do something here. Hogan has a pretty good arm, launches that one deep. That one's going to be batted around, goes down. And we're going to go in the first half with an 18-point lead, thanks to John McConnell, who has three touchdown passes in the first half. That's my Heisman quarterback. Now, Iowa comes out here starting the second half knowing they've got the ball and they've got to put points on the board. It's as simple as that. Our offense has been on fire. And barring something crazy happening, we're going to continue that streak. Iowa lining up with five wide right now. they got a whole lot of people on the field offensively, see what they can do. Cole's going to get a hit on the guy, and Mike Hampill, the playmaker. The playmaker's play. Oh, my God. Y'all see that spin move? Hey, he's got to have some more time on offense and on special teams after that. I know he was an athlete, but I was kind of a little bit worried about, you know, what happened to Jordan Damon, where we maybe burn him out a little bit because he was playing both sides of the ball. But I think Hampill might be the real deal. Like, this dude is just killing it for us. And I love seeing what we're getting for him. So offense might be in his future a little bit more. Iowa came into this game feeling pretty good, but I think, again, they didn't play a lot of top talent. We are a true number four team in the nation. Like, we're really showing that we're legit. Third down is short. Oh, my God. The play action was absolutely there. We maybe could have thrown that one wide down the field, but John McConnell shrugged off a dude that was right in his face. McConnell picking up big yard after big yard after big yard. You love to see it. First and 10, heavy in the box. Like what we're seeing here from Jeremy Willis again, short game, big game, whatever it is, he's gonna catch it. McConnell already 202 yards passing, an insane amount of yards. I'd love to see it. Ooh, we got Cedric Riley in the game. Let's actually uh, let our backup QB get a little bit of action here. For something that might actually work, and that one's gonna work. Riley's gonna hold in. He's fast, and he's just fast enough. A great block there from Jared Gold and Cedric Riley, the backup QB who was an athlete coming in, is in the end zone on the reception side. Iowa really came into this game thinking they had something, and honestly, for the first little bit, I thought they did too. But then I remember who we were and who they are. Our big goal right now, though, was making sure that we get a lot of our guys the yards they need, right? Barr needs those yards. We obviously want to make sure McConnell gets those yards as well. And if we can keep those guys being highly productive, they keep climbing up for the awards they rightfully deserve. Deuce Hogan, though, he's been pretty efficient, 12 for 17. But those two interceptions are really what has turned the tide of this game. Try and get in there to stop this running back. But, dude, Gavin Williams is the one player that has not made a mistake for Iowa. Iowa trying to stay alive in some possible way here. It's going to be difficult for him, but again, they could possibly see themselves doing something here. If we could just 
Learn to make a tackle, we can stop him. I'm trying to keep a little bit of pressure here. We haven't really gotten to the quarterback as much as I probably won today. Cole, though, makes a big hit. They're going to get this one underneath. Hall and company trying to make the tackle, and they can until Ray Walton slams him down. I mean, their quarterback got drilled. This man threw a pass 737 and one-third feet in the air, and it somehow was caught. It was a literal prayer. Another slant route. We're getting destroyed by him, and he actually fumbles that one. Now, I'm pretty sure that dude's in the ground, but it, the sake that they don't actually challenge that one, Ray Walton is trying to show his 40-yard dash, which isn't great. But we'll take the turnover. They're probably challenging that, though. And as we expected, the refs are helping out Iowa in any way humanly possible. They're going to challenge that play again. As we look at it, yeah, the man's down. That should have been called and blown dead on the field. There's no shot that was a fumble. <laughs> We're our best here to see if we can stop them. Three minutes left in the third. Iowa again. Feeling like they're alive. And honestly, the way they're moving the football, they definitely are, especially if we can't score on our next drive. The thing, you're, the thing you're seeing, though, from Deuce Hogan is that when he has a little bit of time, the dude's making plays. It's just we've gotten to him a couple of times today, which has stopped him from making those plays. Oh, my God. Steven Lotus got absolutely destroyed. Gavin Williams is apparently the truth. Trying our best to get a stop. Second and short. They're opting to not go with the easy pass. They go across the middle, and we hit him hard with Josh Cole, but Deontay Vines was ready for that hit. Big time players made big time plays, and good Lord, we're trying to find some big time players make a big time play right about now. They go to the corner, and that guy was not Ray Walton. It absolutely was not him. But we are absolutely on the road. You know, momentum can swing, and that is something we do not want to play with. So we are going to do our best to make sure that they do not get the ball with a lot of time left. And at the same time, though, that requires that we are productive on offense, which, again, we really haven't had a problem with today. So I'm not super nervous about that. But the fact that we're two for five on third down conversions, having to go to fourth down a couple of times does make me a little bit nervous here. John McConnell showing the legs, and he does just enough to get across the first down marker. Third quarter's winding down, the last play of it. McConnell's feeling it. We're just going to get rid of that one. No, no worries risking it. Okay, I actually lied because that was not the last play of the third quarter. This is the last play of the third quarter. Handing it off to Barr, who goes well up the middle again. Eight, nine yards. He's been finding a way to get it done. Fourth quarter's here. We have the ball, about 50-some yards to go. I like our chance, but they're putting a lot of guys in the box. They know we're relying on the run, but that means that if Jason Barr can get loose, that dude might be going to the end zone. At the same time, we don't want to become too one-dimensional, so we're obviously going to sprinkle in some passing here and there. But also, if you're going to let John McConnell run wild like this, then we're letting John McConnell run wild and slide because we're being safe out here. Just outside of the 30. Not a lot of linebackers there to stop Jason Barr if he can get to the next level, but just kidding. The safeties came up pretty quickly after four. Barr's had a good game, not a great game, but again, being productive is what you need from your running back, and he's been consistently productive, which you love. Now he goes up the middle. Barr's going to break a couple of ankles, swerve his way down. It looks to be the 10-yard line after a 19-yard rush. He's over 100, and that's what I want to see. This has been one of the more balanced games we've had. Let him McFadden get loose in the backfield here. No, we were, we were incorrect. We were definitely kind of hoping that Stewart was going to help him out a little bit, but he didn't. And, well, now McFadden has negative rushing yards for the day, which you never want to see. Baker comes in the backfield. Barr swerves again. Picks up what looks to be about six. We were two for five on third down conversions earlier, but we're looking much better. Four for seven, two of those being in a row. We've wasted a lot of time off the clock for Iowa. They obviously can't be happy. We go to Jason Barr here, who gets that block, and he stops on the diamond. Barr is in the end zone. Four touchdown pass of the day for our quarterback. And we get our running back right back in the end zone, this time on the receiving side of things. With a 42 to 17 lead, we've pretty much got this one locked up. All Iowa can do now is try to get some reps in, maybe figure out some plays that might work for them, because what they're doing right now has not. Four and a half minutes left. We're just trying to shut them down a little bit. Maybe get some of our guys a couple of reps in now that the game is fully locked up. Now, their quarterback's trying to scramble, but this is a no scrambling zone. No, apparently. Okay, you can scramble where you want to. Third and short. Try to get into the backfield. Our guys are just getting pancaked nonstop. It's just what it is. It's what it is at this point. Iowa's still marching in the field again. The one thing that's helped us out is the fact that they turned the ball over multiple times today because if it weren't for that, we'd be in shambles. And John Hall, back to his usual self. Second and 10, Hogan back there. The time still Williams, who I think they've kind of went away from a little bit too much. If they didn't go away from Hogan, I mean, excuse me, away from Williams, they'd be in a much better spot. Iowa, despite being kind of in a rough spot on a lot of third downs, they're five for seven. Like, they've been really good there, too. That was a big sack on the previous play by Stephen Lowe. Can we get another big stop here? They go across the middle. This time it's the Deontay Vines, who we stopped short, and they probably go for it here in fourth and two, despite all hope being lost. Now, the game is pretty much 
gone at this point. So we're putting in a lot of our backups so they can get some extra playing time. Because again, if we can get them to be in a much better spot, including McFadden having positive rushing yards for the game, that's a W. And even after a gain of four yards, <laughs> McFadden is still in the negative for yards. Well, right back to him here. And okay, he's just he's just not getting out of the negatives. It's not happening. Five for eight on third downs. Ron is going to make a couple of adjustments here. He's a speedster in his own right. And he's got Miner, the backup tight end. You don't really see him get involved much. He's more or less blocking nonstop, but the dude's got some hands. Cedric Riley's look really good today uh, on the receiving side. You can see that he can obviously still throw the heck out of the ball as a QB. And oh, look at McFadden. <laughs> he finally did it. Positive yards. One of our last real plays here. Again, we're just running out a lot of clock. We got a guy opening Baker and Baker is. Oh, hold on. We're going to call a timeout. That man was making some plays. Two for two, 33 yards. We'd we'll love to have this man have a passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown in the game. Especially a receiving touchdown and a passing touchdown in the game. He throws a dot. This one's to minor. Oh, okay. We're cooking. I mean, look, we might have two plays left in us here. We're going to see what happens. Sending Willis deep. Riley under center. He's got a guy. Oh, that might be a pick. Okay. You know what? You completed it just out of desperation to the wrong team. You know, Iowa needs something positive. It's been a rough one for them. Going into Iowa and winning is never easy. These fans are crazy. They show out. Or they've got a lot of people they packed into the stadium. But McConnell, 13 for 18, 237, five touchdowns, four carries, 60 yards. Man did it all today, except turn the ball over. Got to love that. Again, recapping what John McConnell did. Greatness, five touchdowns, being that efficient. You got to love it. We also see Cedric Riley, 3 of 4, 55 yards, one interception. We don't really count that again, so that's just us trying to force it into coverage late. But still, we like what we saw from him today. On the ground, bar 18 for 120. Got to love that. One touchdown. McFadden finally got positive yards. McConnell had 60 on the ground. Riley, it just wasn't meant to be. In the air, though, Tom Baker, 4 for 25. Pretty much small yards for him all game. Robert Raw, 3 for 70 with one touchdown. RJ Riley had a nasty reception for one touchdown, and we just sort of we ran a lot today. You got to love it still. Uh, Jeremy Willis got in the end zone as well as Cedric Riley in that nasty reception and Jason Barr on the crazy spin move pivot whatever you want to call it that got him in the end zone. I love what I saw from him today. Josh Cole had a fantastic game a couple of blunders here and there but still big time player. Eight solo tackles for him one of those being for loss Ray Walton got ran over a lot but still five total tackles. From a sack perspective we're going to see two one from Jason Caps and one from Steve Lowe and pick wise you already know what happened there. John Hall somehow got a pick and then we also see Mike Hemphill make a pick and try to make a play that almost went for a big game. We said it before and look, I'm going to say it again. This is the best team I think overall we've ever assembled. Yes, there are holes, especially a linebacker and some other areas, but we're finding guys that are playmakers. And at the end of the day, if you were trying to make a run for a natty, a national championship, you got to have playmakers to get it done. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys in the next one.